It's only a kick. A jump. A block. It's only a serve. It's only a tackle. A run. It's only for the fans. After all, it's only pressure. You got this. Adidas. This episode is brought to you by Pepsi Wild Cherry. Pepsi Wild Cherry is bursting with delicious cherry flavor and a sweet, crisp taste that gives you more to go wild for. Getting wild may look different these days, but whether it's opting for a solo Friday binge watch or a big night out, everyone can indulge in their wild side with Pepsi Wild Cherry, also available in Zero Sugar. So grab a Pepsi Wild Cherry and get wild. Back Ram fans, this is Rams Up, your favorite LA Rams podcast. We are proud members of the Fans First Sports Network. That's fansfirstsports.com. You can also follow us on YouTube. Our channel is at LA Rams Up. I'm your host, Mark. You'll hear from my co-host, Tom, on occasion as well. Hey, we're not Rams insiders. We're just longtime fans who love talking about our Los Angeles Rams. Let's get to it. Welcome back, everybody. Episode 385 of Rams Up. And what is the primary focus of this episode? I'm going to share with you my Rams shopping list. Put together a list of all the things they need to get done. And I'll share that with you. One of them they've already accomplished. But with free agency around the corner, man, it's coming fast. Perfect time to put together a little checklist. And that's coming up here in a second. Now the Combine has started, of course, and we will be covering that in ensuing episodes. We'll highlight all the important things coming out of that. However, I don't want to do too much of a deep dive on it. I mean, I think it's interesting. There's plenty of data out there all over the Internet, though. And, you know, you see these articles about this player stock being up and this player stock being down. But we know as Ram fans doesn't really apply to our team. Les Snead and Sean McVay put very little stock in the combine. Maybe the virtual interviews, yeah, but the 40s and the shuttle runs and all that, not so much. They have the game film. They were at the senior bowl. They have pretty much all the information they want. Now, there is another side to it, if you look at it this way. If there are players the Rams are really settled on, players that they really like, maybe they're hoping that their combine performances go south, because that's not going to affect their assessment of the player, but it will perhaps cause other teams to pass on guys the Rams really like. And vice versa, prospects the Rams aren't interested in, maybe they perform really well. Blazing speed, great vertical jumps. They go earlier than they should, and the players the Rams are interested in fall into their lap. I mean, look what happened with Puka last year after a dreadful combine performance. So that may be the one aspect of the combine the Rams really care about, aside from the interviews. We're going to get into it a little bit, of course, but not a lot of content on the combine, just the highlights. Episode 385, let's talk about a player who wore number 85, And I'm not going to go with the obvious player here. You know, there's only been four players in the history of the Rams to wear number 85. Gene Lipscomb in 1953. You all remember Gene. Kendall Blanton in 2022. I'm not even sure how that was allowed. Must have been a reason for it. And then Jack Youngblood, the Hall of Fame defensive end. And we're going to talk about him another episode. This episode, I'm going to talk about the first great number 85 for our Los Angeles Rams, Lamar Lundy, one of the fearsome foursome, played right defensive end, was with the Rams from 1957 to 1969, had 60 and a half unofficial sacks, was a member, sometimes the forgotten member, of the fearsome foursome, the greatest 
defensive line in the history of the National Football League. Yes, that's right. The greatest. Not up for discussion. Merlin Olson, Deacon Jones, Rosie Greer, and Lamar Lundy. And if Lamar Lundy was the weak link, well, the That just is more evidence that this was a great defensive line, the greatest ever. Lundy came out of Purdue in the 1957 draft. Rams used the 47th pick overall, a fourth round pick to select him. He actually played flanker for three years as well and had six TDs. Fun fact, Lamar Lundy had three interceptions in his career and all three were returned for touchdowns. 6'7", 245, so he was a long and lanky defensive end. I have to imagine he blocked, tipped a lot of passes as well. Lamar Lundy, one of the fearsome foursome. And here's another fun fact. Lamar Lundy portrayed the boulder hurling cyclops in the unaired pilot of Lost in Space. It was then recreated episode four of that inaugural season. And go to IMDb, and sure enough, There's Lamar Lundy as the giant Cyclops. I also have a free agent trivia question for you, and this is a tough one. I'm betting few of you can answer this, and if you can, you're a certified hardcore fan. In the 2007 NFL Draft, the Jacksonville Jags selected this wide receiver out of the University of Central Florida, played with them through the 2010 season. He was pretty good, battled through some injuries, But after that fourth season, he had 1,659 yards and 14 TDs, became a free agent. On July 29, 2011, our St. Louis Rams signed him to a free agent contract. They were coming off a 7-9 season. Steve Spagnuolo was the coach still. A lot of us still had fresh memories of the greatest show on turf, and our memories of that were slowly slipping away. We wanted our Rams to reclaim that offensive magic. In 2010, their receiving core included Denario Alexander, Danny Amendola, Brandon Gibson, Marty Gilliard was a rookie that year. They had Laurent Robinson. So going into 2011, we really wanted them to add some weapons. And I remember I was so excited when the Rams signed this guy. We got a new weapon. Rams are back on track. Man, fans are so gullible. He played in four games, 11 catches for 139 yards and zero TDs, and he was released on October 17th of that first season with the Rams. Rams went 2-14 and that year. Who was this free agent wide receiver from the Jags that was going to put the Rams on a new trajectory, lift their offense, and get them back to the Super Bowl? At least that's what we were hoping. Didn't work out. Answer at the end here. Before we get to our shopping list, one news item, it's really three items in one, the Rams have reportedly been talking to three key free agents, guys about to become free agents, Kevin Dotson, Akilah Witherspoon, and John Johnson. Apparently, Rams haven't been able to secure their services for 2024, so they will apparently hit free agency and the Rams will continue to work on bringing those guys back. Just an uncertain time if you're a Rams fan, but it's still pretty exciting. Pretty confident the Rams are going to get it squared away one way or another. Dotson and Witherspoon, two cornerstones, two key positions that we got to nail down for 2024. The right guard slot and a starting cornerback. All right, less than two weeks until free agency starts. That's 4 p.m. on March 13th. Hey, if you're going shopping, you better have a shopping list. And I have put together a 12-item list, what the Rams need to do. Now, not all of this is going to take place during free agency, but you certainly have to have your eye on what you need. If you're baking a Super Bowl cake, you got to make sure you have all the ingredients. I'm going to start from the bottom, number 12, work my way up to number one. And I've covered a lot of position groups. I still have a few left to cover. So I'm not going to go into great detail on each of these items. It's going to lay it out what I'm thinking, what Les Snead and Sean McVay have to have their eye on as free agency starts. Number 12, they need to add an inside linebacker. 
Now, preferably that would come through the draft, maybe a fourth or fifth round pick, depending on how many picks they have. Now, preferably they would add someone in the draft, but it depends on how many picks they end up making. I'm not convinced they're going to end up making 11 picks. So maybe they go out and add a young linebacker, free agent linebacker. I think this group could use some improvement. Ernest Jones, Jake Hummel, Christian Roseboom. Now, the wild card in this discussion is the guy that they signed to a reserve futures contract, Olakunle Fatukasi, a 6'2", 240-pound linebacker out of Rutgers. He could actually end up filling this void. But if it's not Fadukasi, let's go add another linebacker, an inside linebacker. Number 11, uh, we're going to need another tight end. Not feeling good about Tyler Higby's readiness for the beginning of this season. And I'm leaning towards a veteran tight end. I've heard people talking about the Rams drafting a tight end, maybe even two. Well, we have Davis Allen and Hunter Long. And Hunter Long coming back from an injury too, right? Bryson Hopkins, an unrestricted free agent. Maybe they bring him back, but that doesn't count against my number 11 item on the shopping list, bringing back Bryson Hopkins. I still think they need to add a tight end. Aside from that, preferably a veteran tight end with a little bit of experience. Or if Tyler Higby comes back in time for the start of the season, very doubtful at this point. Maybe we don't need to add anybody. But right now, number 11 on my list, a tight end. Number 10, a promising young wide receiver, and I'm talking about a draft pick. Yeah, we need to draft a wide receiver. If we could find someone in that fourth or fifth round range, again, that would be great. If one of these really good wide receivers slips to us in the first round, definitely grab one of them. Lad McConkie in the second round, you all know how much I like him already. Add another young promising wide receiver. Cooper Cup isn't getting any younger. Let's go find another young guy. Number nine, same thing at cornerback. We need to add a promising young cornerback. And the more I think about it, the more mock drafts I do, that first pick could very well be a cornerback. Some really good ones. One of the top five guys is going to slip to the Rams, and there could be a very good one available in the second round as well. I'm thinking one of those picks has to be a cornerback. Number eight, and this is the item that we've already checked off the list. Sean McVay and Les Snead doing some early shopping, a number three wide receiver. And by bringing back Demarcus Robinson, we have checked that off of our list. So yeah, number eight on the list, a number three wide receiver, check. Number seven on our shopping list, our next left tackle. Now this would be just icing on the cake. If we could find a tackle in the first three rounds, it'd probably have to be a guy that's going to be our next left tackle. Or if we're going to go out and spend big time bucks on an Andrew Whitworth type left tackle, that would be fine with me too. Now, I don't mean to besmirch Alaric Jackson. Is he our next great left tackle though? Paul Wally on the roundtable was talking up Larry Jackson, and he could very well be correct. But that's why it's only seventh on my list, though. If we could find our next great left tackle, that would be awesome. And number six on our shopping list, a kicker we can count on. I don't care where he comes from. If we're using a draft pick, it better be a sure thing, or we go sign a free agent that can get it done. A lot of free agent kickers out there. Got to spend a little money on a free agent or nail it in the draft. Now, none of this third round Jake Moody nonsense, but we can get a good kicker in the sixth round. Number five, and this is escalating in importance as we go up the shopping list, as you'll see, a backup quarterback. We found out last year and the year before how important it is to have a competent backup Matthew Stafford getting through 17 games without injury. I mean, that would be ideal, but we can't count on it. No more Bryce Perkins or John Wolford solutions. Carson Wentz, yeah, that worked for us. Baker Mayfield a little bit too. Got to bring in a competent backup quarterback. And it's kind of like the kicker situation. If you are really, really confident 
that a draft pick can come in and provide that service to our team, well, sure, go for it. But man, it's a risky proposition. And is the answer Stetson Bennett? I doubt it. Got to move on from that. Fourth on the shopping list is safety. Hey, any safety, a draft pick, a veteran, need to beef up that group. And, you know, I was going to put safety on here twice, a young safety, a veteran safety. But I think we're actually good enough at that position, just adding one really good young safety in the draft or bringing back Jordan Fuller or John Johnson, someone like that. I think we'd be okay. Not stellar, but okay. In fact, what I expect them to do is sign a free agent safety, whether it's Fuller and or Johnson, and draft a safety in the later rounds as well. Word on the street is they have had conversations with John Johnson about coming back. He will hit free agency, though. No similar comments about Jordan Fuller, curiously. And number three on my Rams shopping list, a surefire edge rusher. These last three I shared on the roundtable last week. A surefire edge rusher, and that means either a free agent or just a sure thing in the draft. And there's only a couple, really. But, well, you know what? Come to think of it, they're never a sure thing in the draft. You just never know. Dallas Turner, Jared Verse, Leatu Latu, Chop Robinson. That means you're using your first round pick for an edge rusher. That is not a sure thing. Or you go out and trade for or sign one of these stellar free agents that are out there, and there are some good ones, but that is definitely high on the Rams shopping list. Number two on the shopping list, a number one cornerback. Now, that could be Akilah Witherspoon, could be somebody else. My preference would actually be to spend some money here and go out and get one of these top cornerbacks, free agent cornerbacks, someone like Sneed. There's a rumor that the Chiefs are going to franchise tag him, and he has been given permission to seek a trade. That'll be pretty pricey, though, but that would be an upgrade at our number one cornerback slot if we replaced Witherspoon with Sneed, or you bring back Witherspoon, draft a young one. Yeah, cornerback's on here twice. That's right. Number nine, a promising young draft at cornerback. And number two, a number one cornerback. Need to bolster that group for sure. And number one on our shopping list, we've been talking about this for about a month now, Kevin Dotson or a similar player. Now, Dotson's going to hit free agency, it appears for sure, according to the Rams. That doesn't mean he's walking for sure. He's going to see what else is out there. Hoping he gives the Rams a chance to match. So they either need to bring him back. And if not, there are some other free agents out there. And I think there are pretty close to sure things in the draft. Late in the first, early in the second. A really promising interior offensive lineman that you can put on the right side there. Of course, if Coleman Shelton walks as well, it gets even more complicated. Might need two guards. Move Avila to center. But going off on a tangent here. Number one on my shopping list, Kevin Dotson or a similar player to make sure our offensive line remains very, very good. And the answer to my trivia question, who is that wide receiver, the free agent wide receiver from the Jacksonville Jags that we signed back in 2011 that was going to elevate our passing game, going to help us get back to the playoffs? didn't work out. It was Mike Sims Walker. One last thing before we wrap things up here. I'm going to have Scott Richmond on for a mock draft. We'll share that video probably Saturday night, Sunday morning. And Paul Walia will be back for another mock draft. He'll take another shot at it. And if you want to participate in one of our mock drafts, if you want to be in the driver's seat, you want to channel less need for a mock draft, send me an email, ramsuppodcast at gmail.com. We'll talk about it. Maybe get you on for a mock draft. That's going to do it for this episode 
remember you can reach us at ramsuppodcast at gmail.com. And don't forget about our YouTube channel. Our handle is at laramsup.com. Till next time, keep the horns up, stay safe, and have fun out there.